Hello, my name is Elizabeth Griffin. Um, I am a dental receptionist. Prior to that, I was a stay at home mum for 16 years. Kind of, that's who I am. What was your history in South Africa like as a non European, non white person? Oh, yes, let's not give us a European because yes. I'm not from Europe. Um, what was it? So I was born in the era of apartheid, which means that there was um, very strict defined rules as to what white people could do, what black people could do, and what people of colour could do. Um, then also in the realm of people of colour, there are people who came from Cape Town, which is where I'm from, and we were called Cape Coloureds, and there were other coloureds, which were people from other parts of South Africa who were people of colour as well. Um, what differentiated Cape Coloureds from other coloureds was that we were still under British rule up until 1967, the year that I was born, whereas other coloureds throughout the rest of South Africa um, had lost that right. So independence happened, the national government took over and they were in charge of where we could go, where we could live, where we could be educated, what we could read, what we could listen to. Um, what beaches we could go to, who you could marry, um, basically everything. Um, you could only, as a person of colour, sit in a part of the train that was for coloured or non-whites only. Um, you also had to get onto the train station through a non-white entrance. You, um, you couldn't live in an area that wasn't a colour area of colour or non-whites. So um, being a person of colour in Cape Town meant um, a whole lot of different things. Um, for example, the, um, we had a joke when I was at high school that if you joined the police force and if you're a white person, you got a gun and bullets. If you were a person of colour, coloured, you got a gun. And if you were black, um, you just got shot. Not really a joke, but <laughs> well, we, yeah, it was funny at the time. Um, but that was basically what it was um, to be a person of colour. It was still the army, white kids were conscripted, so they had to join, um, but they fought a war within the borders of South Africa. They didn't, have, they didn't go and fight anywhere else um, because they were fighting a political war. What was a repercussion of, say, you accidentally walked into uh, the white section? Because <laughs> the rules were so embedded that you just didn't. I can tell you that I was arrested for wearing a t-shirt. Um, the face of Nelson Mandela, we all knew who Nelson Mandela was because we were taught about him at university. But we never actually saw his face because it was it was against the rules. So um, the government controlled all news spaces, everything. Um, so we didn't actually know what the rest of the world knew what Nelson Mandela looked like. But for us in South Africa, um, we didn't until we had some things printed. Um, so we finally got to see his name. So I was wearing a T-shirt which said "Free Nelson Mandela" because we thought it was so cool. Um, but I actually got arrested for wearing the T-shirt. Um, luckily my friend's father was a lawyer so he could get us out before any bad things happened. Um, the way that they torture you is they use a wet cloth and they choke you with a wet cloth because a wet cloth when you choked with it doesn't leave any marks or ligature marks. Um, so they would sort of choke you until you're just at the point of really fearing for your life and they assume that you would then cough up all secrets and tell who the leaders were and stuff like that. Um, but again, my friend's father was a lawyer, um, he was very aware of what was happening to us and so he got me out within 24 hours. But the army came at you with what was called a Casper at the time, so it was this big truck that could drive into um, the, the, your neighbourhood and um, they would block off the streets and it was big enough to carry almost like a, I don't know what the term is, contingent of soldiers, um, but the door would open and they'd all come out and they would either um, have live ammunition or rubber bullets or shamboks. Shambok is a piece of leather that's normally taken from the horse's tail and it whoops you and it literally takes skin off. 
when I was growing up, even though you were the best at what you uh, across the country in track field or anything like that, because you were not white, you could never represent your country in the Olympics. Um, I had one friend that said, I didn't even know there were brown people in South Africa because I saw sports and you didn't see brown people <laughs> because that's the only people that could represent. Whereas in New Zealand, if you have the ability to do it, you can do it. Nobody's going to ask you who your parents are. No one's going to ask you um, your skin color or you didn't have to live. You don't have to live in the right area. You don't have to look the right way and you don't have to belong to the right group in order to get ahead. And that is why I love New Zealand. And they give you the vote for free. You're on your antics on voting. <laughs> voting is so important. They should just have me as a little voting thingy. Shalaza,